What up, Jet Team? You caught me drinking out of my trusty Thunderbird mug. This was actually given to me by the brother of one of my crew chiefs when I was on the Thunderbirds. So I want to give a shout out to all the crew chiefs out there or all those that work on jets in some way or another. You guys are awesome. And speaking of awesome, this is going to be clip number two with my conversation with Dave Burke, who is an advisor to Top Gun Maverick. And in this one, we're going to get into a funny story in the beginning that may have elements of the movie Happy Gilmore, if you've seen that. And then we're gonna talk about humble, credible, approachable, and we're gonna add on one more bonus to that. That's the motto of the Air Force Fighter Weapons School. And it was kind of adopted for Dave Burke throughout his career and in his new work with Echelon Front, which he does with Jocko Willink. So this is gonna be a really cool clip. It's clip two of four. But if you wanna see this entire podcast in its entirety, Go to my vlog channel and I will link to that in the description. Otherwise, make sure you check out all four of these clips on the BJ Clean channel. And before we get going, if you would, just poof, dominate that like button, maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, Pilot Somewhere gets their wings. Let's dive in to this clip number two of four with Dave Burke. Here we go. I want to step back for a second because I don't know if some of the viewers know, but so you work at Echelon Front right now. You work with Leif and Jocko. Yeah. Um, and I was, did I was uh, stalking you on your Echelon front page, and I was laughing because of the gold polo. Can you tell people about the gold polo real quick? Yeah, you know, it's kind of a, a classic story of not doing something very simply uh, simple that we teach, which is if you don't understand, you should ask a question. <laughs> um, but the story goes: so I worked obviously at my, my career as as a pilot, but ironically, probably the most influential year I had was not flying airplanes. I, I volunteered to be a forward air controller. Uh, you know, some of the Air Force terms, you might heard the term JTAC, it's a pilot, so it's a little bit different. But in the end, I volunteered to go on the ground to control aircraft very randomly through a series of just fortunate or unfortunate events, depending on what you're looking for. I found myself in Ramadi in 2006 at the height of the insurgency, brutal, violent, you know, worst place to be. Showed up in the exact same place, the exact same time as Jocko's task unit, task unit bruiser from SEAL Team 3, and essentially was co-located with Leif's platoon, one of Jocko's two platoons. And so my team, my Anglico team as a forward air controller and Jocko and Leif's team, we ended up working together really closely, built an amazing relationship. I was with them on a whole bunch of missions and we got you know, really tight. This is back in 2006. And, you know, I go my way, they go their way. I hadn't talked to these guys in years. Um, and Leif saw me doing an interview on 60 Minutes about the F-35 randomly when I first picked up that F-35 transition. Nice. And so we kind of rekindled our connection. And, he, and he's like, hey, man, we, we think this company is going to grow. We would love you to join. And they, it was just the two of them at the time. And I'm like, eh, I didn't know. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was, you know, I was on track to stick around for, for the Marine Corps. I'd selected for 06. I'd selected for 06 command, like really, really big decision. I'm like, hey, you know what? I really feel like I'm ready to do something else. He's like, cool, come to an event. He texts me the location, the place, and the time. And I'm like, cool, what, what do I wear? You know, I've been in a uniform 23 years. That's a dangerous question to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he, he texts me uh, a message that said, um, you know, we'll be in like, uh, pants, uh, and, and gold shirts. And I'm like, I, I remember reading the text and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and it was kind of, a, kind of a little bit of a red flag, but all I did is reply, Roger, you know, I didn't want to ask any questions and you know, right. the new guy wanted to make a good first impression. I don't obviously have a gold shirt. So I went to the store and bought, uh, like a canary yellow as the closest I could get polo shirt. What had happened was when he typed in gold, I'm sorry, when he typed in polo, it had auto corrected to gold. So instead of it saying polo shirt, it said gold shirt. So I show up and wearing like these blue pants and this bright yellow shirt. They're of course not in gold shirts. They're in just like black polos. And as soon as they walk in, Jocko's like, dude, what's with the gold shirt? <laughs> and what better a way to show one's wealth than by wearing a shirt made totally out of pure gold? Yeah. Dude. So I was super embarrassed. I was mortified. I spent the whole day in this super bright canary yellow polo, this kind of gold polo. And of course that got legs of, of you know, the new guy doesn't even want to confirm. Is that, you know, is it really possible Nathan Doc would be gold shirts? But I, I bought myself a gold polo thinking that's what they're going to wear. And uh, the rest is kind of history. Dude, that's awesome. I thought it was hazing at first. And you've seen Happy, oh. you've seen Happy Gilmore, right? Absolutely. See it. What, what's the, the ninth green at nine or something like that? Yeah. 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 For those watching, if you haven't seen it, basically Happy Gilmore shows up to the PJ tour and they're like, hey, man, welcome to the tour. We're so glad that you're a part of this. 
Show up tonight, 9 p.m. on the 9th green. Wear a suit. Wear something nice. <laughs> Happy. Dress nice, huh? Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> Almost 9 o'clock. So he shows up and the sprinklers turn on at 9 and he gets soaked and he's like, all right. Like, I definitely thought it was hazing, man. Are you sure it wasn't autocorrect? Like... <laughs> You know, I never thought on those terms, but I think what it boiled down to was that was 100% me, not them. And uh, I wish I just said, are you, you know, am I seeing this correctly? But um, it all worked out. But my first impression with Jocko was it was not a good one. <laughs> well, I love the fact that you guys, you seem to come across as, you know, humble, credible and approachable. And that's and I would add in there like, I don't know, like you like to have fun. Like there's like humor involved. And anytime I've seen like leaders that I respect or people that I want to be like, it's kind of like a little bit of that is, is like worked into it, right? Like having fun, joking around. Um, so it sounds like that's the culture that you guys are in and maybe the culture that you bring to other organizations when you, when you meet with them. Indeed. I'm yeah. glad you kind of uh, mentioned that WIC mantra there. I've stolen humble, credi credible and approachable uh, from the weapons school and from the Air Force because I think it's awesome. Um, I really like that. And I, I think the part that you're, you're also adding to that, which is something I think is really important, is the authenticity. Uh, and I think the best part about getting to know Leif and Jocko differently from my time in Ramadi, that was a war zone. It's a very unique environment. I was kind of felt very much out of my comfort zone. These are Navy SEALs. I'm a pilot. So I didn't get to know them like this there. I got to know them in other ways. So me joining Echelon Front, exposed me to a whole different side of them that I hadn't seen the not in the combat zone side. And the best part about that is that it is genuinely authentic. These are as authentic as human beings as I've ever met. There's no behind the screen facade. There's no how I am on camera versus off camera. They are who they are. And I think it's, it's undeniably comes through about them that they are authentic, normal, regular people that have done some incredibly incredible things but they're just regular people. They like to have fun, like to have a good time. Um, they are they are genuinely humble. They're certainly credible and they're genuinely approachable. And I've learned a lot from that, that that authenticity is really important. Of course, we carry that with our clients, but it's it's a great thing for me to be with people that I respect. And then when I get to know them, I realize this is who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's a core of who we are at Echelon Front is what you see is what you get. There's no behind the scenes behavior that uh, is going on that we kind of get it all squared away for the camera. You are getting the authentic uh, person, no matter what the environment is. And I've seen them in all sorts of different environments. And it's great because it is genuinely authentic. And I'm glad that comes through because it's certainly important to us. Well, I love that you said that. I think that's why it works, man, is like, that's why you guys are this like force to be reckoned with. You know, it's not just a flash in the pan, like, cool, you know, one hit wonder. It's like, this is a brand, you know, uh, the whole brands that are also attached to you guys are lasting because people trust you. They're like, oh, cool. We, we know these guys are going to, you know, be honest about what they say. You know, it, it, it's origin, right? That that one of Jocko's companies made in the USA. And like, I don't think people have ever, they're like, yeah, like we know that. I mean, for a lot of reasons, like the way that you guys explain it and talk about it, but there's no like, well, and I think that's, that's an intangible that not a lot of people give enough weight to is like you know this is our life it's not just you know business so it's a great point man I'm, I'm glad that that you see that and and i think the recognition for anybody out there listening that that is a critical factor to long-term success is you have to be an authentic person uh that's true in the military it's true out of the military i think that's a kind of human nature 101 so yeah i appreciate those comments man they're spot on yeah for sure man um i i like to nerd out on leadership stuff too um I, I got to chat with Simon Sinek a little bit. Uh, are you familiar with any of his stuff? A little bit. I don't, not, not super well, but I certainly know who he is. Okay. He talks about like long game versus short game. So like if you're playing the short game, you know, you're in it for the quick profits, you know, the easy success, the quick, you know, your 15 minutes of fame or whatever. But if you're playing the long game, you're building that lasting brand and company. So uh, when you were talking about, you know, your guys' philosophy, I was like, oh man, this is, this is the long game versus short game. You guys are playing the long game. So. 
We, we use the exact same language. We are playing the long game, the strategic game. That's absolutely right. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed clip number two of four. Make sure you check out those other clips. And if you want, go to my vlog channel. I'll link to that in the description. You can watch this podcast in its entirety. And there's things in that podcast that aren't going to be included in these clips. There just wasn't quite enough time. So definitely pop over there and check out the whole episode. And before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button. Maybe even subscribe. Every time you do that, create a mini sonic boom somewhere in the world. Let me know in the comments below if you like this format of the interviews. And most of all, thank you for being here. You've helped me grow this channel a ton and I'm very grateful for that. But most of all, have a great day.